So we've been told by Boris Johnson to uh, avoid social gatherings, uh, pubs, clubs, unnecessary travelling meetings. Uh, we just had a pint of Guinness together in the, we shouldn't say the name of the place, should we? But it's a pub. Botanist. At, the Botanist, around the corner. Uh, <laughs> John drunk his, drunk his Guinnesses very quickly, didn't he? Guinness is Guinness very Whoa. quickly uh, I don't know why you're laughing we're in the midst of the coronavirus COVID-19 uh, nothing funny about nothing death nothing funny about death and um, and John has announced in the, in the midst of all of this madness that this is his last podcast apparently as well. so yeah. <laughs> he said mm. before this is his he last podcast he threw his toys out of the pram did mm. <laughs> he did say this is his last not podcast not a happy camper are no. you not? no Come on, let's get it out in the let's get it out in the open. Why no, not have? By the way, it's just us three this week because um, we had fifteen guests lined up, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> but let's name them and shame them. Yeah. Uh, Luke Gale pulled out. Ben Westwood pulled out. Yeah. Darcy Lussick pulled out. Joey Lussick pulled no, out. No, he didn't. He would have yeah. come. Yeah. I, I, well, had to, I had to let him down. Are the Lussicks just a one. The half a guest. The they're yeah. pathetic, both yeah. of them. And I tell you why they're pathetic because um, I've been working with um, with Darcy's uh, other half today. Came over on the train with me from Manchester up to Leeds to do a TV show. Absolutely fine. Now she thinks she's got the coronavirus in the space of two days. They've got the doctor around there. Uh, and that's how we should start the show, actually, because, look, the coronavirus, is, we're not making light of it, or the, even though we're going to make a lot of light of it. Um, mm. You uh, play for Toronto Wolfpack, correct? I do, yes. And four people within your squad have apparently got the coronavirus. No, I don't know. Well, what does... According to your coach, Brian McDermott, but don't, don't let me put words uh, in your Showing name. symptoms. I think showing it showing symptoms. symptoms. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, you uh, said a runny nose and a bit of a well, cough. Running nose isn't a symptom, so let's get that one straight. So what, you've got a bit of a cold or you've got a runny nose, you're feeling a bit under the weather. Mm. Is that Does that mean you've got coronavirus? You might okay. have it. I think but you guys have all have been it. told to train but, but, on your own. Yeah, but for 14 days prior to that, they had it, assuming that these are the symptoms manifesting itself. So these aren't new symptoms, they're just... No, no, these are new symptoms, but for 14 days we've trained together. We've mm. had interaction together when it was virally very contagious. Mm. And now we're not sort of now everything's being cancelled after everyone's had contact so what you're saying is there's a possibility that you're contagious I'd, uh, yeah possibly but possibility you That's are nice, you've been it? with Darcy's um, yeah. partner yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't yeah. sure is it his wife well when you, when you don't know you say partner don't do you? you really yeah I don't know or if you you know if it's a gay relationship or something it's, it's a safe one to go to isn't it partner, partner. yeah life partner um, but that's again by the by so but Leeds, Luke Gale, has yeah. self-quarantined. You guys are now been told... He's self-quarantined. What do you mean he's self-quarantined? Well, he's not here. Well, he's no, not you here. Don't, I don't know if he's self-quarantined. He was told to go home, self-quarantine, lock himself down. <laughs> That's what he was told. He's not here. So no, I've got the text. Know? Have a look. I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you on there. Anyway. No. Yeah, no, it's serious. Well, it's it's yeah, serious. Safety, no, we're not. safety first in this uh, instance. I think, you know, it's highly contagious. If there's signs of people having it in a... In a close proximity world like rugby league when we train together we do weights together we wrestle and cuddle all do, that sort of stuff we do yeah you wrestle cuddle and do weights together. wrestle yeah we do weights eclectic mix of things high five it? into a, a man hug mm. and obviously it's really contagious so it's it's in the best interest of um each player to to um self-isolate where possible i think so the big news that has come through this week is that you guys are not going to play super league for at least two weeks Right decision, firstly. Yes. Right thing to do. I mean, was it strange to you, John, that Cass played Saints, for example, on Sunday? Everyone was like, go on, rugby league's carrying on to the end. The, no. deci the decision's come through now, two weeks, then they're going to look at it, how they how the schedule's going to go on, how they're going to work through to essentially October. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just think um, there's lots to consider, Will, like as in, is it the right thing that Toronto don't play games, um, if you follow like government guidance and like what the advice is out there, then mm. yeah, it's no, I mean the whole league though is suspended, yeah, yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah, the whole league suspended. Um, isn't it interesting though? I find this interesting that sport sort of jumped the gun before society. So, so Premier League football and and you know all of these sporting events were being cancelled left, right, and centre. Um, before like. There was any announcement from the government that offices would have not, you know, you'd well, would, would isolate. Sits in two, two groups. It sits within the UK, but also the Premier League sits within European football, where a lot of the other European leagues have been shut down. So they kind of, they're probably taking advice from the other leagues in Europe as well as the UK government. So I can understand how they 
and well postponed the season before yeah, but, they got. Have the you advice. been to London? I've, yeah, I've been a couple twice, of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Lon- London is like a cosmo. Man- Manchester's a cosmopolitan city, mm. so the blend of people in our cities are is is like multicultural. It's it's European. It's we in our business hire European people, like it, like that society now. So what I'm saying is, that I suppose our cities have have always been at risk of of this blend of people from all walks of life that have travelled that and and I thought I found it interesting that sport jumped ahead of society. Mm. You know, sport set the example of we're not putting events on, we're cancelling these events, the tennis is cancelled. You know, and this actually sport's probably been the 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 forerunner for a lot of those behavioural well, sort of changes. Sports, more sport rugby league and rugby union have probably only followed suit today. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's been too late. Why? In what sense? Of 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 postponing the season. Mm. Yeah, but why? Because I think from the data that we've all got and we all see because of social media and web and the internet and everything, we see how it's grown in this country and grown in other countries. And day by day for the last two or three weeks, it's incrementally got much, much bigger in terms of people with it, people dying from it, and I think it should have got nipped yeah, but, to the bug. But, but the, the only reason the Premier League did it when they did, which was, um, so because what we today, we're, we're Monday when we're recording, Friday was the Premier League, mm. right? And that was because people within the league were infected. There's still no evidence that anyone within products they haven't even been tested, but they've all real riddled but with is, it. Is that but, a risk worth taking? You've no, got not, you've got to wait for players or managers to get diagnosed with it before you think. No, but look, a couple of days later, they made the decision, fair play to Super League, and they're saying, we're not playing. And look, will it resume in two weeks? Probably not. Will it resume in three, four, five weeks? Probably not. Who knows? We, d- we don't know. We're in that situation. But but where does that... That's the point, actually. I think the biggest thing that I find interesting is where does this end? Mm. So is this the virus is going to disappear because we or we're just slowing down... They talk of a second peak in winter, you know, yeah. when when it goes when the weather changes again. Yeah. Like what what well, it's, it's unprecedented, isn't it? Like yeah. this has never been seen for probably hundred years. Mm. So why with people's lives at risk, why would you risk that? Why would you not well, postpone things for two weeks like we have done and then see what happens if it's contained within those two weeks? But you're let's, not better, let's better being safe rather than sorry. talk about the impact on, on the, the UK and on the economy in the UK and businesses and so on. Let's talk about specifically on rugby league because you yeah. guys have been around the game your whole lives. Okay, yeah. so the, the impact of this virus, even if it is to be two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks on this league without playing and, and not even behind closed doors, no games going ahead, the potential of like, all right, when does the season finish? You then go into the England Ashes series, you go into a World Cup in 2021. Where does, where does this end? What kind of impact do you think this is going to have on your sport? It's the end of rugby league. Really? Yeah. You said that with like a little glint in your eyes like you yeah. don't believe it. No, no, well... You believe this is right. the end of rugby league? Yeah. So rugby league's created a business model where a lot of clubs are dependent upon the revenue from fixtures to keep afloat. The biggest outgoing for clubs on their balance sheet is players. Um, the players generate revenue through matches and ticket sales. We, Although we've got season ticket like sales coming in, what what's going to be the reimbursement strategy for, for season support, ticket holders? All sports rely on those. They, they do, but, but rugby leagues, we're more... Reliant. reliant. We want one thing that rugby league has always done when times got hard is create more fixtures. So we used to play twenty two games and then we play twenty four games, then we play twenty eight games and now we play thirty one games a year. Minimum that that minimum. And that that's not an accident. That's because each event is a revenue generator. So our sport more than any other sport has created more events, more fixtures. Why? Because to generate more revenue, more cash, more bar sales, more hospitality sales, and the more the you know the more fixtures that we have, the more revenue clubs get in. And and as we know, as, as business owners, flash cash flow is massive. And if if teams have a period now, they're talking about four months, three months, whatever. You know, it says April third, just as a glimmer of hope that we might get going again. What if we don't get going again? Well, realistically, nothing's going to happen on April the 3rd. No, but so what if we don't play rugby again this year? Yeah. Right. Are you? Do you believe that, that clubs will survive? Well, they, the clubs, already, I the, mean, clubs, the, the, clubs, the small ones have said they wouldn't already, haven't no, they? No, the they've, clubs without... Right, what happens to the, the championship clubs? What happens, like, yeah. you know, 
it's not just the Super League clubs. Like David Argyle, if he wanted to, our, my club's owner, could keep paying players if he wants to. Only Some, for a period I, I, of time. I think there'd be a bailout before that happened. Bailout from, from who? who? From the government. Well, we, we, Rugby League is not going to be high on the government's list no, with but, all respect, is it? But from... Okay, I'll give you an example. Keep people alive first. Oh, and then yeah, Rugby League. No, no, but sport in general and jobs. So as a, we're business owners. There's, there's certain initiatives for small to medium businesses for um, bank loans that's, that's very low interest that are in companies' favour to help them survive but mate, I and don't promote think, I, don't th I don't think people but give I, but a shit about rugby league no, in terms but, but, of 3,000 3, people at the end, turning up at the to Huddersfield like the government and go, oh, let's bail them out. 7.5 billion. The day. And secondly, if, if there's a, an empty stadium in Salford with hundreds of people's jobs at risk, if uh, a club goes bust, is that really going to happen as well? And is the owners of the wealthy clubs, the Leeds, the Warringtons, the Saints, are they just going to just pack up and leave because the, 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 look, look, some of the smaller clubs are struggling? I don't, I don't think that's going to so happen. How, so how does I it think it'll there? change, but I don't think it'll be the end of well, rugby league. Let's like try and structure stage. it as a discussion then in terms of how it works. Because say, say for example, let's, do, let's just say that, just pick a number out of the sky. They've, they said it's going to be a two-week suspension. Let's say it's a, there's seven weeks and there's no rugby league. Okay, That would have a huge, huge impact on the clubs, on the smaller clubs without... But rich benefactors like I mean who who are the, let's just name them you know Saints, worth it. Uh, Saints worth, yeah the, the Huddersfield the Toronto you know they, these guys will, will be fine for, for Wigan Warrington. they'll be they'll be fine for a period of time yeah. your, your your Wakefields your, your Cassies your your um, Salfords whatever are going to struggle and they're going to struggle quick mm. aren't they so there's so there's all sorts of discussions going on in terms of just one that's out there potentially right players taking pay cuts and is that realistic to ask players to take pay cuts. Is it realistic? Do you think that would happen? Is do it likely? Play, do you think players would do that? Some would, some wouldn't. It just depends on where you are in your career, doesn't it? And you couldn't expect players to do that, could you? Really? But in a in a business, no, you well, you shouldn't. But in a business sense, it's your, if it's your biggest cost and you can't afford to pay them, like what's the alternative? I think I think players would take it if they knew they'd have longevity in that in the career. Oh, let's stick you right in the firing line. Yeah, go on then. You want to sort, you know, you know, you don't, you don't do badly at Salford. You know, experienced guy, been there a while, not a bad contract. If they came to you and said, "Okay, mate, look, we're in unprecedented times. We need you to take a, a sixty percent pay cut, uh, and it's going to help Wakefield, and it's going to help the championship, and it's going to help all the knock-on effect of the grassroots of rugby league." Are you going to do it for us, Mark? Mark sixty percent is quite, quite sixty percent. We're oh, in okay, unprecedented I'll times. I'll tell you another one. If it was a lot smaller than sixty, but it meant that I know I'd have another couple of years on my contract. Also, oh, it's about your contract. It's not. About, I'm talking about the preservation of the sport. But but then it'd be twofold. Then it would it preserve the sport, but it also mean that I've got a job for the next couple of years. If there was a, a game to be played, but a sport to be played. This in. is the mm. weird thing, right? We're talking about right the the coronavirus thing. We're talking about people who are working and generating the economy and and driving the economy, not working and not going to work and not interacting and not driving value in our economy mm. to protect people who are vulnerable. And, and, and predominantly that's elderly people or people who, who have got a, you know, a pre-existing condition that makes them vulnerable to this disease. Mm. So what we're saying is we'll shut everything down to protect those people. Mm. Well, you know, this responsibility to isolate and to, to make yourself safe. My 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 mum's got leukemia. She's 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 and she smokes. Well, can I just interrupt you there? No. She smokes and she's gonna continue smoking because um yeah. you've got you've got a picture of Carol. Yeah, but I'm not gonna get that out. Not yet, it's now no, not the time. No, 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 I'll get it out later. Can we I've just tell that part of the story first? Well, yeah, no, my mum my mum <laughs> sent me a picture of wearing a builder's dusk mask, but she'd uh, fashioned <laughs> she'd fashioned a hole for a, a Marlboro light. Just through. So it's not even protective for viruses. It's just a bit no, of builder's the dust thing mask. thing is actually that the cigarette already has a filter in. Yes. So it probably, yeah. if she if she pursed the lips tight enough around the cigarette, she yeah. was fine. But she and, looks like a terrorist. She, she might have to put two up her nose as well, but then she'd be fine. <laughs> but so anyway, this is designed, right? On, so, so what we're doing is we're isolating. We're stopping everything to protect those people. Right. Aren't we? Yeah. 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 So that's that's the aim of it, to stop them getting ill. Yeah, but those people we don't know who the, who those people are. Well, but they know. No, but if you but they know. But you might not have a predetermined health condition that makes you susceptible to this the, the, the virus. Yeah. That that you're talking to people that are probably sixty, seventy and above, 
and people with respiratory problems. But there might be people out there that have got a condition that they might not know about that makes them highly vulnerable in this under this this climate at the minute. Yeah. It's not something I don't think it's something that's worth risking yeah, so the livelihood of so many people. Okay, for. so the economy is gone. No, but I'd I'd I think they're doing the right move at the minute of just, just postponing things for two two weeks and then seeing what happens then. Well it's a buying time exercise, isn't it? Two weeks. We <laughs> suspend and we, and they've even said it, Rob Elston's statement said we we are doing this and it gives us the time to come up with a reasonable schedule, plan, fixture list that everyone is going to be happy with or, or can be happy with at that stage. But realistically, all right, let, let's go along Rob's words. What would be the best outcome to this? Say there is a, a three, four week suspension, even th- even that amount of time, that period of time. Because look, you can't go down the plane behind closed doors. So, Luke, can so, you? so when, sorry, what day is it? Because it costs now? money. What day, what day are we on now? Uh, it's going to get my 16th of March. 16th so of March. It, Monday how, the 16th so of March. So how long is this delay now? It's three weeks. Two weeks. Two, two weeks. Two, two and, and a half weeks. So, so this has April. got an incubancy period, hasn't it, of mm-hmm. two weeks mm-hmm. before you know you've got The it. peak of the virus, by the way, is, is at least 14 weeks away. Okay. So what are we doing then? We're not we're not going to start playing rugby. Well, in I think we weeks. I think we know that it's a buying time exercise. As I just said, it's yeah. not going to. That's not. Yeah. The so what? But what we're going to do? Come up with a plan for fourteen weeks time. Mm. So what? So like, look, you're you're in Rob's shoes because look, Rob shouldn't be getting any blame in this. They've they've followed. They've looked at what the Premier League have done and so on. You're in Rob Elston's shoes. You're in a board meeting, and you've got you've got all the owners of all the clubs. You've got Eamon McManus there. You've got the the rich benefactors, and you've got the guys from Wakefield going. What the fuck is going on? What do you tell those guys in the board meeting is the best plan? Obviously, you have to take governmental advice, but what for this is sport? Than, is it not for this bigger, sport, the what's the best outcome? Sport. Yeah, it's bigger of course than it is, sport. But, but, we, we, well, we can't surely, sit surely, here and talk about surely the that country. Then, isn't it? Surely saying no, but, that. But, but for the, the sport, what's the best outcome? How, what can they hope for right. out of this? The, this has been... It's, it's a global problem, mm. right? And, and it's a serious, fucking serious thing. But it has been exploded by misinformation stupid social media shit people panicking people like exaggerating the situation roll. yeah just that's an example flash but death rates scare. are up john you can't yeah, avoid, yeah, yeah. avoid the how many people today? died of cancer today will no i know in this more, country more than coronavirus okay so but, let's go by all the bog in the, roll. In the demog- in the graph that's going up this is going up yeah, like I, the fucking I, eiffel I, yeah, I, read, yeah. I read something yesterday that they expect if it was widespread and they just didn't didn't put any conditions in place. Seventy percent of the population could be um, put under this the, the, the that, coronavirus. And that's a stat. That's a stat. And yeah. that's that, a stat. That, that's what they predict. They don't like, know much of it. And that's like Boris saying we spent three hundred. We'll get three hundred and forty million a day if we go out the EU. But but there was no, a, a there, was a, there was a political it's motive with him saying that because it yeah, was bullshit the, that we know now. Well, how do you know there's not a poli- political motive behind this? Because it wasn't from Boris Johnson. It wasn't from uh, politicians. It was from. Chief medical officers uh, or so, experts, yeah, supposedly experts who probably know. Yeah, and fiscal more, experts came up with that. Yeah, more, for more, they probably know more than us three because this is a bit more than winning a political campaign. Yeah. However, they said that seventy percent of people could become uh, can can get the coronavirus, and then the stats on death rate on that seventy percent is about one or two percent. So seventy percent of uh, population sixty eight million is over forty million. And then one or two percent of that is anywhere between forty but and eighty thousand people. But what's that? Is that let if we just carry on as we yeah, do? If, not if that's yeah. Carry yeah on so we, we carry on as we do. What about if the vulnerable people, yeah. the people who are, are seventy, sixty and over, the people who might have conditions that they're aware of, people who could have conditions, get it checked out, yeah. and they self isolate, and let people and the people who right. If my, if my mum gets really ill off this, yeah, or if my mum needs me is I'm she's dependent upon me the last person she needs is you because you've no. potentially been with people who are infected no no but what I'm saying is the it. weird thing is let's all isolate and the mum who's dependent upon me is then not I've got no profession the game I play you know is goes into financial hardship the reality of this is we could all become part time the reality of this is our business that we've invested all of our money into could go under yep. Right, so this is not fucking no, a no, joke. A lot of people die from, from yeah, from p- right. So, but the idea of this is we all stop doing this. Everybody stops, right? We stop. We don't go to games. We stop everything. We finish everything, and we just buy time. And then, at what stage do we? This is my prediction of what will happen. We'll get so far down the track, people will realise it's turned into anarchy, and we'll start going again. And the game will start again, even with the virus out there. Well, do you not think a two-week minimum postponement 
bides time for more information and you see where, done it, where, yeah. Where, yeah, where the rate of infection and death is going. If it's still going through the roof, well, you might as well, well all it? bets are off then because it's not, it's not changing, is it? But if it's stemming the tide, people are getting better. It shows that some um, some isolation, some stop of sport, some mass gatherings is is making a difference, and they might be able to 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 change change. Well, what what's concerns going. it for me? Like, for, look, for example, when you t- look, take it away from the business, I take your point. You've got a mm. business, so let's just stick it to rugby league because we're not s- sitting here scaremongering the rest of the world for people. No, just go on Facebook. No, exactly. Just no, go on there's Facebook because Dave, 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 Dave the Schmave from Chelford I, I has point. just wrote a point about <laughs> that if you've got asthma and you take, from? That was you take anti-inflammatories, song, you're going to get ill. I got, we got a text going around Rugby League of the, from the Dewsbury doctor saying if you take anti-inflams and you're a rugby player, you're more oh, yeah. likely to get the oh, yeah, coronavirus. You sent me that ibuprofen and like, anti-inflammatory. Just come on. I've, I've heard that from elsewhere. And yeah, steroidal and just, anti-inflammatory. But it's, just, here, it's like proliferation of just... It's not government fact yeah. it's it's a whatsapp screenshot sent around it's like before cheltenham all the tips go around of everything it's all nonsense it's all right. but you had a, you had a, a bet on a tip last week john wilkin i did and it right then at cheltenham that's fine so there you go Obviously you might win on the no anti-inflammatory oh, right, favorite tip. yeah <laughs> Pathetic. What do you mean? Anyway, that was the favourite. What do you mean pathetic? Oh, he had a won. tip on the pathetic on, on the favourite. Pathetic. Yeah, but it was like definitely bet on this. Oh, it's definitely the favourite. Definitely going to win. No, no, no but I don't always win. No, no, you didn't see the, the the tip was it was structured. Okay, how much money did he win? Not enough. <laughs> Why? Well, because your business is about to go. Yeah, because so. I'm just holding all. I've <laughs> preserved all my cash to buy bog roll. Right. No, we're going to get onto that in a minute. But firstly, I want to know. So, for example, in this sport, okay. So look, just taking you back to the Premier League. A matter of a week ago, Mikel Arteta, the Arsenal coach, felt a bit groggy. Okay, he had because it's football and they've got more resources than rugby league. He had a test, and he was deemed to have had the coronavirus. So he's been deemed to. Well, he, he was told he had the coronavirus. Right. Okay. So, so he had, he had it. Well, yeah. Okay. He had the coronavirus. Two, yeah, three days. He felt a little bit shit, and and now he's absolutely fine. But he's got to stay out out the picture for for two weeks. Yeah. My point is that now we're into the point now in this country, in the UK, where tens, twenties, thirties, forties of thousands of people are uh, being tested uh, and that there isn't enough testing kits because they cost 60, 80 quid to test people. So the government have said, if you've got these these symptoms where you've got the, the cough and you've got the fever and so on, don't uh, unless you're on death's door, do not come to the hospital. Stay at home and sort yourselves out, which most people can do with those symptoms, right? You're not yeah. going to die. Ninety percent of people are not going to die. They're going to stay at home. They're going to feel yeah. shit, and then they're going to be fine. So, you and I'm bringing it back to this sport. Yeah. Toronto have said that four people are showing symptoms in Toronto's statement of coronavirus type symptoms. Yeah. But they wouldn't be tested, and they're not going to be tested. And there'll be yeah. people at Salford who next week say, "Oh God, but they can't." Jack- but they can't. <laughs> oh, Joey, you've got. I've got but they can't. But they can't test, can they? They can't test everyone now. No. no, no so, no. so essentially, no one's going to know whether they've got it or not. So, so yeah. you're not going to know whether you've got it or not. No, so well, that's what I'm saying. Where do we go? You could be a carrier, so, but so you're happy to go and see your mum and so on. So what? Where? No, does I'm not this... happy to go and see my mum. This is the point. I will be responsible and try not to see my mum. You'll see us though. And yeah, because you'll you'll like you said you'll be three days. Well, you could get ill. You might have it. Yeah. I could get ill from doing this. You look ill. Flash could get ill. You look ill. But we could all get ill from doing this. The reality is, we will survive. Yeah, should we survive. Yeah. No, we will. Yeah. No, we, no, wait, no, we will, of Mark. Course. Well, unless I'm, you've got, a, you don't know you've got respiratory problems that they're undiagnosed. How about that? So just manage but, to get through a 20 But I want to bring it back yeah, to yeah, the but impact there's, there's on people the that have it, like maybe one in a hundred, one in a thousand, people will die you've got that. Yeah. I, I want, what I want to bring back to, to get John, that risk this is what I possible. want your opinion on, is to the impact on this sport, and even if it is, like I said, to be a matter of weeks, well, the impact would be catastrophic on well, some the impact, clubs. The impact's got nothing. The championship would be gone, wouldn't it? championship would be gone. Right, the impact on our sport's got nothing to do with the brand. It's got nothing to do with the development of the sport. It's purely down explain to cash. Explain that. Explain that. For no, me. it's purely down to cash. Okay, explain. No, as a business, mm. the only impact this will have on our sport is is cash yeah. as a business. Yeah. That's it. I just I just think it's a really challenging time. I'm not I'm not making like like the game faces challenges anywhere commercially. Mm. We we speak about this often, and and hence my frustration with it is that we speak about the financial challenges for our sport and there's financial challenges for sports and businesses regardless and this will really intensely scrutinize how viable our sport and our clubs are whether 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 we survive or not look i was being 
Facetious. outrageous yeah. in saying what the game's going to die. And but, but that's the worst case scenario, isn't it? I'll mm. give you a scenario now. So in two or three weeks' time, um, Robert Elston, the Super League club, say, look, we've got an opportunity here. Um, Sky want to film all, all the games. There's going to be no crowds. And we, um, as long as all your players are fit and healthy, and we can do checks before They'd the game. lose money. But the, Unless Sky funded it, because but, to but, put but, on but, those but, games behind closed doors, you didn't need but, at least four hundred people, or five hundred people. But if there's, if there's no other sport being on telly, everyone's at home self isolating. Then Sky would have to fund it. Is that's then, that's? Then would, you're asking Sky for more money. They're already losing but, money. But, but you're asking for more money. I'm, they might have a bigger. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a scenario. So they, they have two games a weekend. If they had six games a weekend, yeah. all on telly, people at home, all watching sport. This is the only sport that's on. Players are uh, guaranteed that they're not going to catch it by. You know, uh, taking certain measures. Yeah, like we could do like hand sanitizer at scrubs. Or by maybe yeah. getting tested to see if you've got it. Yeah, we all test before a game. If you're all yeah. fine, you can play. That'd be a good start, wouldn't it? Is, so. is, but, 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 yeah, but just, is that a scenario that might happen? Because mm. they talk about it in football. But there, there are so many. Like, finishing the we are not CEOs for good reason of companies because no. there, there are all sorts of reasons along that. Like, can you contractually con change the conditions of a contract? halfway through a season to say we're going to play this change, many games yeah. well, I, I just think there's a lot to come out in there I think we're you know the game This is it right is it good for the game no Co like just course it's not no. is, it, is it good for the country no course it's not is it good for businesses course it's not I honestly think that stuff like this will sort out the order of things and you'll find out who's resilient who's resourced who's not who's plans who doesn't you'll find out players who are committed who aren't You'll you you'll find a lot out about our sport in the next eight weeks. You'll also find out because it's going to take a lot of goodwill if there is any for for some of these people clubs to be saved, isn't it? There's going to yeah, be, yeah. You'll but find then out but then about, about but, but, but but look look that that's been the case since day one. Mm. You know, without the contributions of, of of wealthy owners, the game wouldn't have survived this long. So there's always been a a, a reliance upon on third party sort of cash from from a board member from from a, a wealthy owner to bankroll the game. Mm. The TV deal, you know, just about covers the salary cap now, but not the, you know, the operational expenditure of running a venue. Now mm. that's a different proposition altogether. What we're talking about is the TV deal co covers the salary cap more or less. Some teams don't spend the salary cap, so they've probably got a bit of wiggle room. So the likes of your Wakesfield and your Salfords probably have maybe half a million quid that they're not spending on the cap mm. or whatever. So they may maybe have a bit more cash in reserve that we don't know about. But I do know this, the match day for clubs is really important for cash, for yep. cash flow. I'm not talking about whether the clubs are profitable over the course of a year, but during the season, as every business does, you would plot on your P&L injections of cash and you would base that forecasted on revenues from games or through a period. And if in the next eight weeks they've got eight spikes of cash revenue that they've allocated in this budget for this year and that's not coming in and that's 400 grand 500 grand 600 grand whatever it's got to be found from somewhere and i've just got the sense that some clubs haven't got that well we might be quite lucky because we've played five of our seven games at home so a third of our home fixtures have already been been done and we've had decent crowds by our standards which is which is great but i, I do worry for teams that have played haven't played because of the snow early in the season i've met i've only played one or two games at home and there will be cash flow issues on the back of that. Do you know how I say this is going to end for Salford? Marwan Kukash is going to ride in like Dancing with Wolves. <laughs> dances with Wolves? Dancing with Wolves? Dancing with Wolves. Dances. Dancing with Wolves. Dancing with Wolves. Not dancing. Dancing, dancing nice. with Wolves. Yeah. With his whole backroom team that were there before that left. Yeah. With a big flag. The club. On the, and the horses are his race horses. And will he have the Dr. Devil he will have helmet on? <laughs> Minus the goatee. No, the goatee's gone. What would he say, Will? Hello, say, I'm back. <laughs> well, well, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's look, back. Uh, just one more final uh, serious discussion before we uh, mm. have a little few more nonsensical discuss discussions. Sport, and this has been a, a topic this week, has, has a duty, doesn't it? And I know mm. health comes before anything and safety and people not dying essentially comes before everything. But sport has a duty of escapism for people. 100%. And it's especially in this time where people are going to be at home and self I mean, Look, if it goes the way that Spain is going, Madrid and Italy, and people are forced to be at home, sport is the only thing that, that in a lot of people's lives... It's an outlet that going. gives people joy, especially during hard times. And mm. That's why I mentioned the point before of if in a few weeks the season could continue behind closed doors, but games are televised, that might be one way of continuing the season, 
giving people that joy of watching their team or, or getting engrossed in, in a match and also maybe bringing in extra TV revenue, I don't know, but I think it does have... Well, everyone will be watching, wouldn't they? Especially yeah, like they, football, they, they'd be stuck, There's stuck. an opportunity. Everyone suddenly... They have no other fan. choice to I watch just, rugby league. I just don't know how they would... How would you do that? Because if players are, are physically in contact with each other, so you've got to be tested before you play, let's say. Mm. So you've got to be tested on a weekly basis before you play. You've got to be tested at training every day to be able to train. Yeah. You've then got to test every steward that comes to the game. Uh, you know, to make it a clean clinical environment, or there's an element of risk anywhere. The, the, Physios, yeah. the paramedics. But, yeah, but the what, there'd be 100 stuff. people in a stadium. Say yeah. Again. In an empty stadium, how many people would there be? Yeah, but like, that's so, again, 30, 30, 34, no, an empty stadium, 34 players, coaches. Oh, mate, more than. How many do you think? In an empty stadium yeah, yeah, yeah. with no yeah, fans. No fans, how many do you think? Well, how many stewards? It's there would be, be in the hundreds. Would, why would they need stewards? Of course stewards? it is. Of course, you don't need stewards. You need, you need medical staff, you need para, you know, paramedics, yeah, you need one, physios, two, three, you need coaching yeah, staff, you need backup team, the players, point, squads. The point is, 20, to put on the event behind closed doors, the reason you do it is it's because it's completely safe. Yeah. So we either go, right, we're playing it, and Who's it's completely safe. going to have robot cameras there, are they? No, it, it, you need crew. You need you need, you need uh, media there. You need press. That's okay. That, uh, okay, then a hundred or two hundred is a lot less than right, five, six, seven thousand. So when is it going to be completely safe to play rugby league games again? Well, who knows? No one knows, do they? No well, one. This knows. could be a stepping stone, maybe in a just few to, months, just to, to soften the curve. Yeah. So there's not as there's not as big there's not as many people die. Yeah. Now. Yeah. But but the number of deaths over the course of a year will be the same. But we're just flattening the, flattening the curve out because the NHS has been chronically underfunded because there's not enough beds because there's not enough machines to to to, to ventilators. Keep, there's only five thousand ventilators. Them. So if that helps, then so be it. Do you know what you do? You sell your stupid coffee business. Start a ventilator no, company. Nobody they're, wants they're, to Matt buy Hancock, it. The health secretary said he'll pay. He even said on TV. Yeah, I saw this. What no stupid. number is too much. So let's go and make some How ventilators. How stupid was that? And sell them. We'll pay whatever for a ventilator. What, and we'll save rugby league with ventilators. Mm. Yeah, we'll get we'll get um, Ben Westwood let's to get, let's get start in his Mansour, garage. Get Shake Mansour on the phone from Manchester City. Yeah, and we say, look, Shake, look, Shake. Right, so Is that what you say? You're gonna, you're gonna, can, can you make us five thousand ventilators? We'll buy them off you. You can sell them to, them to the, the UK government. Sure, can for well. two billion pounds. We'll save rugby league. Would that do it? Someone out there is listening, watching. I tell you, mm. more to the point. Have you guys considered being bunkered up? What are you going to do with yourselves? I, I mean, know. you are going to struggle. You no. can't. You are going to struggle I, at home I, for I, three weeks on your own. No, I will absolutely. What love are you going to do? What are you going to do? Not a lot. Go on then. Walk my dogs. You day. can't do not a lot. I can. Go on then. What, what, what's the day in the life of John Wilkin on a day? Wake up. We'll Get wake up at three a.m. What time? what time are you going to wake up? You don't have to Think. wake up. There's no training. You have, what time are you going to wake up? Talk to the mirror. Practice doing interviews. About five, six o'clock. In Get the morning, up. I'll have a coffee. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's a lot. It's quite early. Yeah, and then uh, just go, just out. go around the house, giving his opinions willy nilly. Take my dogs take out for dogs a walk. Out, yeah. yeah, well, but you can't. Don't. Put, you can't go anywhere at risk. You got to. Yeah, take, you can. You got to stay within two point five meters. So right, this is social distancing. Self isolating. Doubled. Self isolating doesn't mean locking yourself in one room with no food as well. Can we just get rid of this? Well, it it just means got just means restricting your social. If you've interactions. got symptoms, you should be doing that. No, you shouldn't. Anyone, kids watching, if you've got symptoms, you have to. Not if, you, not if you've got symptoms. You can't go outside. Not if you've got symptoms, no. Do you know what self-isolating means? No. Have you read the government? Like, Mark, do not go outside. Go silent, Can he yeah. not wade through fields with his dogs if he's... Do Mark, not go, go outside. Self-isolating. Self if you have symptoms. If you Rather. have symptoms, self-isolating, you stay in your room. We no. don't know. Stay in your room. You're not, we, you're not at your mum listen, and dad's house. That's well. what the government right, What's the difference will, between will, that and then not... anything about your mum and your dad? Not socialise with other people. Just go and walk on your own and come back. Anyway, we digress. But anyway, what we should say, just so we don't get caught ourselves, if uh, if you do, are wondering, don't take John's advice. Look on the NHS websites and so on. <laughs> Wash on your Facebook. hands after look a poo. Look on Facebook. Debbie, 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 Debbie from Dewsbury <laughs> said, don't Dewsbury go out because, it, because the coronavirus exists on leaves for nine hours, like relative to what? Yeah, and if Debbie from Dewsbury is listening, you can get in touch using the hashtag out of your league on, on social media. Please do. And join the conversation. Please do. Um, John, so we'll look, Mark, I'll throw that one to you. You've got a newborn child. He's one now. Might always my child, but and uh, Freddie. <laughs> yep. Shout out to Freddie. Shout what are you going to do with yourself? You've got two, three weeks off. You're probably not going to be training, even though you've got a message from Ian Watson saying you're training tomorrow. You've got to go in tomorrow for a meeting. Uh, but yeah, if if I'm at home, probably watch a lot of cartoons with Freddie. Um, Do you get bored two weeks a long time on your own, isn't yeah, it? And I'm going to love time. it. I'm going to drink all listen, the red wine like, in my house. Listen, there's there's a lot going on that on that we're gambling with. You. A lot of people's lives at risk. I know we've done eight, that. Eight, we've eight, no, eight, eight, 80, 90 years ago, people were in Gallipoli going over the top, and that was seen as a um, a, a worldwide 
you know, phenomenon and, and a, a really tough time. So if people have got to stay home and watch telly for two weeks, I don't think it's that big of an issue. Yeah. Just do it. What about eight weeks? It's not a big issue. It's, the, big issue. it's, the, imp- it's the impact of that. Yeah, and inst- I understand that. Impact. but Yeah, that, and that's... that's that's. And going back to rugby league, look, we're doing a rugby league podcast. What are we going to do for two or three weeks? Well, we'll train. Oh, we'll be back. No, we'll well, train. This is your last one. No, we'll, we'll train. You, of course, you'll you'll do home programs. You, you'll get given things that have been adapted because you're at home. Press oh, yeah. ups. Well, that's yeah. interesting. Like, I don't know. So no. what they've already uh, they talk, talked sure. about the potential of that. I cannot yeah. imagine you doing a home program. Well, you just don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you just don't know me. I do know you, and no. I can't imagine you, you doing a home me. program. Yeah, what are you going to do? What you Sit do? ups. Well, what do you want what me to do? Gonna, well, what, what you tell Star me? Jumps. What you're going to do to stay just fit at home? Go out. Walk your dogs. Go out for a run. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I can't imagine maybe that one. bear peas into kettlebell swings. Oh, good maybe one. do maybe do uh, like a complex, you know, where you do multiple exercises all at once. Maybe you maybe and your wife CV, lifting each other up. You know. Sort of element. To Are it. you going to do? All I'll that? do some core strength. Maybe I'll put like a, a glute band around my knees and just go to the to the kitchen, keep my glutes <laughs> activated. Maybe I'll do car phrases next to my Lama yeah. You're not going to do any of this, are you? Yes. Can you see? I need to do some calf raises. <laughs> you, yeah. you need to do some calf raises. What do you mean? What What are you going to do? Well, I, I don't. I don't have to potentially then come Drink out. Drink copious amounts of red wine. I'd be you, worried. You could, you could come out looking like um, Kim Jong Un after yeah, three weeks. Bet I'm going to retire in four months. Well, I know. The likelihood is. Likely it's relevant for you two guys because you're done. You're dusted. My you're likely it hey, is. My last hey, game of rugby league's already been played. This is your last season, isn't it? You're done. You're over. Playing a bit recently. Think about the 18 year olds who are just starting in this sport. Now, life's not life's not fair. Life's never fair. Life's not Life's fair. Never fair. Has anyone has anyone sort of um, hoarded and gone to the supermarkets and, and ordered the order those things as Amazon um, uh, pantries? Yeah. Our, like French, our fridge is always empty, so I mean I've literally got nothing. I'm yeah. really deadly serious. If, if it if what, it's in tomorrow, your life or in your in your what, fridge, in my, yeah. emotionally in my life, or uh, in no, terms of like you know pot noodles, any dry dishes mm, that you don't need to put in the uh, no. the fridge. No, I just bought. Have red, you got a freezer for? I, I bought some uh, Pomerol Bordeaux red wine. Mm. It's going to well, age. I've got plenty of red it's wine. Gonna, it's going to age nicely. <laughs> yeah, I've got it's a bit too 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 tannic at the moment, but it's going to mellow. I've got some 1984 Chateau Latours, and I'll drink every one of them in the uh, next two weeks on uh, my own. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you come around, <laughs> we'll affect no. each other. No, but are you, are, you, are, you, are you prepared? Are you stocked up? Are you rationed? No, I, just, I don't think you need to. I think oh, it's on, a fake. So, so if we if, if we become like Madrid, you can't go out. Will I, I'm going to have to come around to your house, Mark. Yeah. So, go, so, so you adapt or die. I'll just have to drive. No, Will, Will, in this situation, do you know what you do if you haven't got toilet roll? Go on. You use your socks. I'm from Hull. Why would you need the socks? You just get straight I mean, in the shower. I've never understood this. Outside, outside, never understood this. No. no. I've never understood it. Dude, why do you need socks? Get in the shower. Yeah, but that's fine. You can do that Why too. would you waste a sock? Uh, the socks. Because I've got loads of socks. <laughs> <laughs> but you just get in the shower. No, right. You're well, at home. You're right. not going anywhere. If, if you haven't got food, we're in this gluttonous society, right, where we're panicking because we can't go to a supermarket. Like just People are fighting over wake, toilet roll. Wake up, people. But do you know why? Get an allotment. No, the life. Grow your own veg. Your li- no, it's going to be a game changer for people because you're going to realise how useless everyone is. Well, most people, people are used to well, What are you going to anyway, do? Go on. Are you good? Can you can no, you not survive you unless you go first. to a supermarket? I never said that. Anything. What would you do? I'd and use everything that I've got. Like what? In my cupboards. What what have I got? I've if you run got, out of your cupboards, what I've are you going to do? I've got a bag of rice. You know where you fold it right down, and there's not enough for a full risotto, so you yeah, just got so half left. Risotto. Probably use that. What what when that's done? What are you going to do? I'll go out and find food. Will you let the dogs die? They can't if you can't. I'll forage. Will you let the dogs forage? Will let the dogs? They'll die. Yeah, I'll eat the dogs. He's going to eat his dogs. John Wilkins said he's going to eat his dogs. And if the RSPCA you. are listening. Will, Will, if it gets that bad. I don't bad, know if that's true or not. If, if it gets that bad, Will, we'll eat each other. I'll eat you. Have you seen a live where the Argentinian rugby team crashed yeah. into the mountains? I we, we would, I would, I You'd would be take... piggy, mate. I'd use your glasses and, and set, would, start a fire. Yeah, but John would be a lot tastier than you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What am I going to taste of? I just bit... don't know. No, but, but... Taste of vitamin C. <laughs> You would just like, Ke- like lots of chemicals, fake tan biscuits. Oh, not the fake Tastes tan, like yeah. digestives. <laughs> not the fake. Will have you been fake tanning? Yes, I've, I've, I've admitted that from day one. Oh, what botox? It's never been a, a secret. Botox? No. Ever? No. It's not my. It's not. We're my lying for. Why are you lying for? Mm. Uh, but in all seriousness, yeah. This is the, you know, we could be in a situation. We're at home. You guys have got families. You got kids. Mm. You got wives. People who I'm love there. us. I've, yeah. I've got a bit of nice red wine. Fine. Yeah. But what do I do? Just drink it all and kill myself. I've got nothing. No, no, I've got no, nothing no, in the freezer. No, no. Just feel well, sad for the wine. I've got no. nothing to live for after that. No, that's, that's probably yeah, true. we'll just let's see where you get to. Make do, a, do, make do, a good. Do you think we'll be sat here in three weeks going? Mm. Oh, the coronavirus. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's weird, isn't it? It is weird. It's like such an unprecedented time. 
You're so like hungry, you've already eaten your microbiome. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Taking a little. <laughs> um, but it's just a mad time. You know, I don't mm. think you could ever really. Like, I just thought when it first came out, I thought, yeah, cool, but it's going to, like, blow Fizzle. over. And, you know, I just think it's captured the worst part of human spirit, the fear. Mm. And, and, and I don't get me wrong. Like you're saying stats about how it could go and whatnot, and that I'm sure that's worst case scenario. But what's I don't see the positive anybody painting like this is how it could go as well. Like yeah, and I we want to believe with you want to believe the worst. So somebody flippantly posts something on social media and it does goes viral, and then everybody wants to believe that somebody bought a multi pack of toilet roll three weeks ago. And that started a national epidemic. People but like to read bad news well, look, and, and they revel in it. They talk about it. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's going on. And a bit of positivity would be good. People yeah. have bought the toilet roll because most people, as I said before, are so fucking stupid that they actually thought that the coronavirus gave you the shits when that's not even a symptom of the coronavirus. But people then were fighting in supermarkets mm. because they thought, oh, we need toilet roll. Haven't sales of Corona beer gone down because... They've gone up. They've gone up. Yeah, they've they've gone, gone up, up yeah. yeah. They went down at first in America, I think. And now they're up. Well, they're up again. <laughs> okay. They when get they knocked up, down and they get up again. <laughs> crazy times, eh? Crazy, it's isn't crazy. it? It's crazy. It's crazy. But, but you, but you're, you know, you you're, seem so sort of blasé. I just, you know. I just think, don't know, these things here to test us all, aren't they? And they'll test other people more than they'll test us. Yeah, yeah. and that's not. That's just honest, isn't it? Mm. Do you know, if I was in my eighties, gosh, you know, like, and you've got respiratory problems, this, this is, you'd be petrified. Mm. Um, but like I said, there's, there's. This assumption that young, healthy, fit people, life stops to protect more vulnerable people. And I, I get that. And I get that. But we have to remember there should be a responsibility on vulnerable people to protect themselves as well. It's not just let everybody cut everything out to protect the vulnerable people. Ultimately, we've all got dependent people on our lives. Me and Mark, definitely you. I'm not sure. Um, and, and we've got a job to protect our families, to protect your immediate environment. You know, Super League players have all got mortgages. You've got um, livelihoods. Everybody in the world has got things that they need to protect. And and you live to your means as well. That's a good point. But you do live to your means. So if you're being paid, all right, say someone, someone is paying you 300 grand a year. Yeah. You're, you're a marquee signing for whoever. You you live your life around that 300 grand a year. That doesn't mean that, oh, look, you're suddenly not going to get paid and, and because you've got then bills and mortgages and cars and whatever and assets and things based around the money that you're Especially you if it's for a finite period of time. If you know you're going to retire at 30 and you've got two years left, you, that money might set you up for the rest of your life. So you shouldn't feel bad about earning that money. And I'm interested in the contracts because I was talking to a couple of players about this. Like, for example, my contracts, right, completely different industry and so on. I have a clause in my contract as a freelancer. I'm not a staff member anywhere that says clause 24 in the case of a pandemic, epidemic, earthquake, fire, act of God. There's no liability. Act from both. of God. That's what, that's what it says in the contract. Act of God. That's what it says in the contract. Oh my gosh. Anyway, forget God for now. Yeah. We've done that. Yeah. Been there with you. And this says that there is no liability to either party. Yeah. So that so it's black and white. Sorry, sorry, pal. We don't have to pay you. And it's yeah, quite well, easy. And I can't well, expect that, to be paid. And like, I wouldn't stand up in court. I'd, so we're relying on goodwill for people. And I'm interested in even. Have you? I mean, have you ever read your your contract? For no. Back to you know. Is no. there? Do you have a clause Flight in there where they could it. go? No. All right. We'll pay you out of goodwill, David Argyle. There you mate. Thirty don't grand, John. If not, you're off eating your dogs. Don't know, but don't know, but there will be one going forward, won't there? Not after watch. this. Yeah. This is sure. a game changer. In yeah, in sense. in loads of ways. Yeah. Yeah. And and it is a game changer to do this podcast because it was your last one. I know it's been great. And like, is there anything it's you'd like great. to say? We really appreciate you having no, no, having no. You on here the I last think few Steve, years. Is it Stevie Ward's coming in? Stevie Ward's coming in. Yeah, yeah. we got we got a few yeah, we've ideas. Got, we've, we've had a few chats talking to people yeah. in America and Hollywood yeah. and stuff. It's been a pleasure. Like, yeah. Can we get the guy that um, the Canadian guy on the Inside Super League giving the big yes. scoop? Yes. Yeah, What's he called? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Why don't you get Chris Kamara on? Oh God. I knew you were going to finish. Why don't you get Chris Kamara? Yeah, what's the problem with Chris Kamara? Nice guy, Nothing. really nice guy. You Nothing. know, he's very positive, on really good times because big he's a nice guy, fan. genuine guy. People, yeah. and and he was like, look, or, he, or is he or, or is he from Wakefield? And because there's no football on, he was available. Well, no, his son's a big yeah, Wakefield yeah. fan. He was so contracted to Sky, and they said we need to pay him. Might as well put him on. His son's a big Wakefield fan. He just happened to be there. They said, can we get? He just happened to be there. He was. What do you mean? He happened to be in the area, and they said because he lives there. He lives in Wakefield, doesn't he? Yeah, which is. A lot of people live in Wakefield I don't know, about that 10 aren't minutes. related to rugby yeah, league. Yeah, I thought it was good, but I could have got so a you, so good on, job. So you've obviously got some beef there, but Chris, no, Chris I'm McNamara. I just thought it was funny. I just thought in the flip reverse, would Phil Clark be on? 
Monday night football. Monday night football. Analyzing oh, the game with Carragher and Neville. Yeah, fell on. Well, to be fair, Chris, Chris, Chris. No, no, it was it was good. I just found it funny. Yeah. I was like, look, with the coronavirus, is it? What we're going to do with Cammy? Chuck him on Sky. Get him on Super League. <laughs> Should have got him singing. He's going. Time. He was looking at the team Can sheet, going, and this. Uh, no, no. He was going there, looking at the team sheet, going, "This, uh, this um, Liam Watts, he's uh, going to do well." <laughs> and then this. To uh, be fair to Chris McNamara, turn up. I don't Chris know McNamara. Right. Chris, Steve McNamara. Chris Kamara. Can you imagine if you merged Steve McNamara <laughs> and Chris Kamara? That would be weird, wouldn't it? He imagine. Said, he said, "I don't know anything about rugby league. My son's a massive Wakefield fan." I've come down here, Cass Saints. I thought you mean I've come down here. It didn't <laughs> just, it didn't just, just wander, wander <laughs> onto the gantry. <laughs> he was paid to be there. Of course right? he was. I'm assuming because I'm a, I don't think these sort of cynical things that you think that he just happened to turn up and they went, Chris, 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 Chris come on, Chris, you should come on. Do you, come you on. like rugby? Yeah, Ryan, come on. From the from the skybox, Chris, <laughs> can we get you on? Come in. Do you like? Saints? Sorry, guys, I'm too busy watching the rugby league. Uh, but anyway. no, it did make me laugh when I saw it. Made you got to laugh, volume, though, didn't it? You got to the laugh during the these times, the otherwise you're going to cry. Off on the telly, and I saw Brian Carney's head come on, and then next, <laughs> I saw Chris come out and sat next to him. I was like, I've definitely got coronavirus. He, he, he had, a, he had, a, he had a, I may be wrong, but he had a. I'm going to. I was going to say number one, but I'm going to be safe and say he had a top five album out at Christmas. Yeah, he's suddenly become a singer, and millions of people bought his album. Singing Christmas kind of Sinatra style, you know, millions. swing songs. Millions. Did millions. Sweet. I mean, how people, many people buy albums? Thousands of people five? don't buy albums. No, no, these millions. Days. Right. Millions. Well, download it. He went triple platinum. Download the CD. Streamed it. Yeah. The CD. That's what he said. Triple platinum, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's more successful than all of us. Absolutely. He is, yeah. yeah. Def he definitely is. you. And he's the last bastion of the pencil tash. There's not yes. many pencil mm. tashes yeah. knocking around. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I let's exactly draw, let's mean. draw on pencil tashes in his <laughs> honour. Look, we've got plenty of time to draw on pencil tashes. So I, 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 <laughs> let's do that in the next three weeks. <laughs> How instead we of keep worrying about rugby league. How are we future, going to keep in touch? Um, just through pencil tash based <laughs> pictures. We've got a lot of time to think about ourselves, about you know the, the direction of our lives. Self reflection, haven't we? Self reflection. Yeah. I'm going to do all sorts. I'm going to have. I'm going to dress up. I'm going to. I'm going to try. So so much time for activities. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Anyway, no, you've you've been great today. No, you've been great. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, are you two okay now? Because okay there was now, a bit of yeah, we had a bit of a fall bit of a conflict last time, wasn't there? Fall out? I didn't even. Well, well, I, I, I don't know if we did, but but off. Will Will stormed off to the car park. He mm. set a four hundred meter record to the car park. Literally, I was running behind him, and you and Thomas was like struggling to keep up with him. Mm. I was like, "Where's where's he going?" And well, then I think I it was when you said to him, "You put a pair of boots on and a kit and play rugby and see how much pride and passion you need." Which is true. And it was. It was quite a big But I've come on this podcast personal. so many times and professed about being a rugby league expert, personal. haven't I? Yeah, because he has no idea about pride and passion. He doesn't know what we go Who through. Who, me? No, about in a sports sense. Yeah, and when did I ever claim to have no, pride? No, but you don't. But that was my point but was, when, but, but you were saying that sure, you were criticising the Blake Austins of the world. I was, not, I was playing devil's were, advocate. I was yeah, playing, well I'm well here to play devil's advocate. What I was doing was defending a guy Oh, look what I've started on now. Competent. No, I was here to play, and always. Well, let's not go to it now, but no. like just for the no, for the no, listeners, no, let's get let's get it out on the air. So, Come on, I, Mark's trying I to am talk. always here, just for people Come listening on. as well. I have never in my life claimed to have any knowledge, or yeah, but no people know that you don't need to say this. I know that. I, I know, know that. people know that. I'm not here to talk about rugby league. I'm here to control you two clowns. Because when we've let you do it on your own, but we'll it's look, been a disaster. Yeah, we'll, 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 so we'll, we'll, we'll look. We'll, we'll let you do we'll your little flamboyant opening where you do three or four parry. I know, I know yeah. but we let you do it do because do what it. it does, it just indulges you. It lets you <laughs> flare your <laughs> some Don't sort of... I went, to, I, I, went repeat, to repeat, repeat, I went to Harrow. I went to Harrow. I've studied literature. I know, look, I'm going to drop in some quotes from mm, Julius so Caesar and all of this. He doesn't understand me, Mark. Anyway. Exactly, he doesn't. Not like me. Not like you. And, you know, I, I will never ever come on here and talk about rugby league because that's not my thing. I'm controlling you guys. And when we've left, when I've been away skiing and been controlling on the posh holidays, when we've let you do it on your own. Mm -hmm. It's been a calamity. Mm. We'll see you guys next time, no, John. Well, I won't see you. No, you won't see <laughs> me again. Can you just do it down the camera, do a nice. Uh, You'll be stuck with me, the one that doesn't talk. To say goodbye. I'll do a sutty wave. Like, <laughs> me and John, you it's next been week. Really nice to have you on the last three years. Well, Bye. Well, it's been a pleasure. Well, um, me and you next week. <laughs> me and you, baby. I've got lots to say. Me and you, Mark. This is where it was always going to go. It'll be great. Um, stay safe. This is where it was always Wash your going. hands, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Hopefully in two weeks. Probably not. Maybe in 2021. See you in October. Good night. Good night.